Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to War Thunder Ground Forces for what is a very special episode. You see, normally on this series I only talk about tanks and aircrafts that you can get through simply playing the game and not having to pay a penny for. But, for this one-off occasion, I'm going to be talking to you about the Calliope. For what is probably one of the most expensive premium tanks in the game, and, well, if you've got the money for it, if you should get it or not. So without further ado, let's get into the video, shall we? Now, instead of talking about the tank itself, that being of course the M4 Sherman, I've decided that I'll speak about, well, the main weapon of the tank. I mean, the thing you really pay the premium for what you're really getting your money's worth with. This of course being that front-mounted 7.62mm machine gun. I mean, my god, how has Ganjin allowed this to go on for so long? It is completely overpowered. The amount of times I have been up against T-55s, IS-2s, uh, Tiger 2s, like, tortoises, anything. This thing just destroys them. It is absolutely overpowered, and Ganjin, you need to get around to nerfing this stuff, because it's it's just not on. Oh, and it's also got some rockets. So, if you liked today's episode, then make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It's always appreciated, and until next time, I say thank you very much, and I'll see you then. Alright, smashing work, everyone. That's why I don't see. Uh, I'll see you all later for a spot of tea, eh? Oh, uh, could you roll the credits for me? Cheers! Petals of white cover fields of flowing and grieving tears, and all the hearts once new, owned and shared. All right, all right, I'll stop being coy about it, okay? I mean, honestly, some people just don't have a good sense of humour. Tchuh. So, as already stated, this is the M4 Sherman, with the T-34 Calopy tank-mounted rocket launcher on top. Designed in 1943, the T-34 Calopy saw combat from 1944 to 1945 in US armoured divisions. Now, the Calopy itself fires a barrage of 4.5 inch M8 rockets from 60 launch tubes. However, this was changed in the later E1 and E2 variants, with the only substantial change being that uh, the 4.5 inch caliber rockets were changed to 7.2 inch. This also saw combat from 1944 to 1945. So surely, I hear you cry, surely this was some kind of M4 Sherman tank destroyer variant. I mean, with how many tanks this thing can go through in War Thunder with ease, then surely it must have been some kind of god of the Second World War. To which I say, no, not really, no. I mean, it was mainly designed to attack infantry and, on the odd occasion, maybe the odd lightly armoured vehicle, but anything more than that, and it just was never really designed for. I mean, I'm not saying it couldn't destroy a tank, it, it definitely could, but that's really what the main cannon was for. You see, the cannon was for taking out tanks and the rockets were for taking out the infantry. You see where I'm coming from here? But surely, in real life, if these rockets were used against another tank, then surely they would absolutely decimate it like they do in War Thunder, right? To which I say, once again, no, no, not at all really. And the reason is because, well, this Kalalopy came out in 1944. And just to put that into context, the Tiger 1H first saw combat in 1941. That is three years before the Kalalopy did. Meaning that, well, by the time it came out, the only things it was strong enough, or these rockets were strong enough to destroy, was infantry positions and lightly armoured vehicles. Because all tanks by this point were very well armoured, and it just wasn't going to happen. 
but enough about all that history crap, because now it's time to get into how good this tank is in War Thunder. To which I answer, probably not as good as you thought. Now, this may sound as quite a contradictory statement, but wait around a while, because I'm going to explain exactly what I mean. You see, a lot of people who've reviewed this tank before, reviewed it when it first came out. And I'll admit, when it came out, it was extremely overpowered. I'm pretty sure it was actually a lot lower battle rating than it is now, which is a 4.3. And it had things such as indestructible rocket pods. So if you were to, well, if you were to destroy the rocket pods on this tank, you could still fire the rockets with ease, which has been fixed now. You see, if the rocket pods now get destroyed, you can't fire them and if they get severely damaged, then you can only fire them at a slower rate. Furthermore, I've noticed that the rockets on this are nowhere near as good as they used to be. You see, before you could shoot any tank head-on with these rockets, and in pretty much only a couple of rockets, you could destroy just about any tank. So yeah, it was pretty good. However, I've noticed that now, it's nowhere near as good as it used to be. The rockets don't seem to be capable of penetrating some tanks head-on, and even if they do, the damage is so minimal you can't even tell. And you would have also noticed, if you're watching the videos behind me, that a lot of the tanks I destroy, I have to take out with my main gun. I can't rely on my rockets, which is something you used to be able to do with ease. So, I guess the main question now is, well, is it overpowered still? I mean, it used to be really overpowered, but with all these flaws and problems that Scanjin have now given the tank, is it as good as it once was? And, well, I think it's fair to say that anything that has a barrage of rockets and a main cannon will always be a bit on the overpowered side, and there's very little you can do about that. However, I definitely say that this tank is nowhere near as bad as it used to be. And I would even go as far as to say that if I was to meet this on the battlefield, I would think I'd just feel more sorry for whoever bought it, because it's just nowhere near worth the money that it costs. So, I suppose in order to answer the question of should you get the Calliope, I'm afraid I'd just have to say no. I mean, the tank is, well, a little bit on the overpowered side still, I'll admit, but is it £50 worth, or, or what, $80 worth? Well, no, it, it's not. I mean, if this thing goes on like a 90% off offer, then you know what, you can get it on me, you know, it's definitely worth the cash, and it is a good, fun little tank, I did very much enjoy my time with it, but it's just not worth the money they're trying to make you pay for it, and if you do have that much money, to which I say, Mr. Moneybags, you should probably just go buy some premium, or, you know, maybe give it to some charity, you horrible person. So, in conclusion, it's a fun little tank, I very much enjoyed my time with it, it is a little bit on the over overpowered side, however, I do not believe it's worth the money they're trying to charge for it. So, that's all from me today. If you enjoyed what you saw, then make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It's always greatly appreciated. And until next time, I say I'll see you then.